Is this good? I don't even know what all gas no brakes is. I seriously have no idea. I hope you put this in. The whole economy got fucked up because of this shit, dude. Trump might be right about Mexicans. That's all. Yo, yo, is there a really good mod in chat that could um, literally just speed run the fudge through this really fast? And you can like go brrr, make sure there's not like a, a flying titty or somebody's like somebody's back door that we're gonna see somewhere. I would rather die than wear a mask. Yeah, maybe you could introduce me as Andrew Callahan, young creative with his finger on the pulse, 3.4 GPA multimedia journalist uh, interested in creating anthropological uh, road-based study of uh, American uh, oddity. All gas, no brakes. Why, <laughs> Adolf Hitler, they have reincarnated him. I never year, thought the show would be this big. <laughs> Three and a half years oh, thanks, ago, Thomas. Uh, not sure. You recognize how time in public, flies but in now 17 I want to be able to do different things. I, I want to be able to make strictly well comedic shit. You hear that? We actually do real reporting at the same time. This is how people are actually feeling. Everyone feel like that. I just want to show people how crazy things actually are. Oh, but this is, uh, um, the things highlights, so a little TOS. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'll try to get your mods and give me the, give me the parts so I can skip them. Okay, 9.50 apparently there's one. Thanks, good job. I live at Walmart, basically in Indiana. I don't live in Indiana, but spiritually and metaphorically, I basically live in Indiana because I live at identical Walmarts from truck stop to truck stop. So I'm Indiana-based. The name All Gas No Breaks, I have no idea where it came from. Oh, gas, no brakes, baby! <laughs> Show me your butthole! Oh, flip flop the clown of a foot fetish. Everybody cough in my face! Why are you doing this? I have nothing better to do. <laughs> Show some fucking motivation! Fuck it, D4! Fuck it, D4! Some people call it comedy, journalism, ethnography, anthropology, all kinds of academic terms. I saw like a research paper on it. There's a way to break it down, but. It's not for me to do. Only like the lamest creators analyze themselves, package it with buzzwords, and distribute it. I just go outside and put a suit on and just talk to people. She oh, real, real, dude! That's real shit, dude. That's real shit, dude. How many times have I told you guys this before, dude? That's yeah, real I and just true. Go outside and put a suit on and just talk to people. She we knew, we, we, we real out here. You hear me? One K out here. Let them know. We real, we 1K out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to the uh, Goodwill in Rapid City, South Dakota, to get a, uh, a new, crispy, oversized suit jacket and suit pants to do some interviews with bikers at Sturgis Bike Week. I think Rapid City's like 45 minutes south of Sturgis, so only a little bit of a detour. Uh, I auctioned off the old suit for charity. I'll skip it, Lee Cox. The importance of the suit is to appear professional as, you know, as much as you can, but not, not like a nerd. These shoulder pads are pretty important. We go for the big because it's funny, but it's also like, you know, this, this is low-key how news anchors dress out here still. Like, this looks professional, doesn't it? Check it, it out. Watch. It's so goofy. I first came up with the idea of a suit. Actually, it was related to Vice. I think I was like 18, I was living in New York, and I bought like a suit just like this, so I could go to, uh, go to the vice office in Williamsburg and then pitch my book. I'm in the uh, Big Apple to do big business. Yeah. <laughs> no, I couldn't pitch anything? Nobody? Can you stop, can you stop video Didn't work out too good, but that was like the first time I ever wore the okay. suit. 650 I mean, to yeah, the suit is the brand, like, I usually keep a suit for like three or four months. The first suit I had, I had for like six months straight. Um, this would be a good time to introduce my camera guy. Yo, come here, come here. Hey, come here, hey. It's my camera guy, Nick. He does all the hard work. Andrew and I met in New Orleans. I guess I got involved because he asked me to hitchhike with him when we graduated college. It used to be that I had to find Andrew's debit card or the keys or his phone all by myself. But now Evan's been with us for like four or five months and now Evan- That's pretty cool though for Andrew's debit card and Andrew's keys and Andrew's phone. I am the production manager for All Gas No Breaks. Nick, Nick really does like camera one. This is 
not not something really suited for a nude beach. Yes, like real life Borat. Camera two, I'll do audio, I'll finesse people for releases, I handle press. We kind of all co-direct when we're at shoots. Like we all know what's funny. We all talk about what footage to use. <laughs> I think like the big part of the show is like Andrew's style of editing. If anyone tried to colonize yeah, them, they got exactly. fucked up. There's gotta be a crash in for fucked, fucked up, right? Yeah. yeah. Fucked up. I've been friends with Andrew since we were probably about 13. He just kept telling me like, dude, you gotta come work with me, you gotta come work with me. And I was like, no, like, I refuse to have Andrew Callahan do anything that kind of resembles being my boss, just because he's such a fucking character. Who knows how, how well that's gonna go. I guess I've been doing it for probably like six months now. Jeez. And it's bigger than ever. I never thought the show would be this big. I think maybe the oh shit moment is Ball happening again. right now. You know, the vice crew's in my RV, so I guess people care. When over a million people follow you, that's every kind of person. You have like Boogaloo Boys and Proud Boys and like anarchists following you at the same time and all laughing at your shit. I have to show what's going on. You guys wanna that's walk in show? the RV? Yeah. All right, everybody get out of the way. We all live in this RV together. Well, also, also, it's good content because there's no like, there's no like rules. The only rules they have to play around is TOS or whatever, right? So, so they can do like media stuff without thinking about all the all the media etiquettes and and procedures. Yeah, this is it. This is where I live in this uh, back master bedroom right here. It's not quite big enough, but yeah, it gets really hot back here. Yeah, it gets really hot back here. This is where we keep all of the. Uh, you know, like, fuck. My favorite camera that we use is this shit. This is our, like, OG camera. We bought it in Miami <laughs> off of, like, this old Cuban man for, like, I think 500 bucks. This is a map of the flat earth. 200-foot ice wall holding the oceans in level and flat. Walmart, Chinese food. <sighs> for when me and the boys want to play beer pong. We do a lot of interviews at children's parties, so we have this to fill up balloons for kids and make sure that they're, like, having a great time and celebrating correctly. Of course. The off-brand sanitizer because we take coronavirus very seriously. Shut. Oh shit! The first Six fifty-seven seven thirty. You have to skip it. Oh man, the first stain of the day. Hopefully there will be a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I just meant like you know motorcycle grease. The <laughs> fuck. Yeah, it's art. We just have to skip it. We have to skip art, even if it's. Yeah, I get it. What's up with the naked painting? Okay. Well, seven thirty. Cool journalism work. Concerned that Julian provides young teens a gateway to cigarette smoking, jazzy flavors like mango, creme brulee, fruit, and cucumber will be a thing of the past. I'm conflicted because, like, part of me wants to say, like, school is bullshit, you know, because, I don't know, it just seems like a waste of money if you already know what you want to do. But for me, school helps. Just having those four years of, like, exams and actual routines, like, gave me what I needed to, like, not fuck up. But I can't say I learned that much from school. If you think about it, jur most journalism curriculums in J school are written by people from the print media local news era. Like they don't prepare you for like Instagram and TikTok maybe being the, the top way to send information out. I literally could have been a local news anchor in like Panama City Beach, Florida, or like Springfield, Illinois, but instead I took my own way. That's kind of cool. I came to Sturgis to like learn about bikers. I've never talked to bikers before. I don't wow. know. Was that 950? Whew, that was close. Guys, it, it, it could have got, dude, it's, it's, it's 1030. Holy shit. It's fine. We're not going to get banned. That was fine. Yo, Leacock, that was fine, dude. It, it, he said from 950 to 1030. Is this fine now? Was that long, man? I just play up the naiveness. That, that's the only element in which, like, the all-gas guy is a character. Because it, it really is just me, but I play up the naiveness. Obviously, I've seen a lot of shit, and I know the answers to a lot of the questions that I'm asking. But it's a thing that Louis Thoreau did a lot. It's kind of like when Louis Thoreau would go to, like, mega churches, like Westboro Baptist Church, he would say, you know, are you in support of gay marriage? You know the answer, but you want to have that dialogue so the audience can consume it firsthand, because not everybody knows certain things. So the, the only way that the all-gas dude is a character is just asking basic questions that he already, he already knows. <laughs> what you doing? Oh, partying, what are you doing? <laughs> Fucking running around. Somebody who really wants to get on the show might be like extra crazy, which is kind of funny, but it's also like, 
is that really how you are or are you just doing it because you want to be like viral online yeah dude you want to come on the dude, show right now? dude i agree with what we saying guys now i talked about this last time again dude Dude, there's a bunch of like talking points, but dude, yeah. you just gotta be yourself. Huh? You just gotta be yourself. Uh, myself sucks. Yourself sucks. Yeah, I'll try it. Okay. What we got going on here? What sucks the most about you? <laughs> my wife. <laughs> just kidding. Do you mean? I mean. Do you mean that? That's, that's, that's good. That's a good that sucking, by the way. Just so you know. Do you, Do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> really? What yeah. do you think? A woman sucks if you think about it. I don't get it. Yeah. Are you still thinking? I, I see what you're saying. Are you sure? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Right. I'm out of here. Thank you. We smashed it. What was that? There it is. You just saw what it looks like. When someone comes up and is like, I'm going to bless this kid's balls. And he's like, my wife, sucking on it. Or whatever. And I'm like, the best is when they deadpan just say the full sentence at the end. Like if that dude looks at me and he's like, I'm talking about my wife giving me head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that I been gotta chat 9, 9, 9, 9 20. That, that would have been the crash zoom. <laughs> My battery's dead, let's get charged. All right. Part of me just like, wants to just like, get the hell out of here. Go somewhere where there's no bikers and no one else. Well, also it's kind of dangerous. Like, relax. So all gas, no brakes started. So at first there was like, the book all gas, no brakes, which was about hitchhiking. The first time I went hitchhiking, I was like 19, after my freshman year of college, and spent that entire summer at, with like a recorder at different bus stations and motels, just like talking to people, I guess on like the fringe of society, like real like road people. This What's is a, a story recorder? from my first ever ride hitchhiking that was mistaken for a, a male sex worker, so that was pretty funny. Yeah, he asked me if I wanted to hitchhike with him across the country, and I had like, you know, that sounded awesome. Because he had been hitchhiking by himself like a bunch of times. So we did that. Yeah, it was a flute. Uh, Hopkinsville, Kentucky. We're trying to make it to Colorado. Living in an RV gives me everything the hitchhiking did, minus hustling for food and showering and a place to sleep at night. It pretty much like totally encompasses everything that I liked about hitchhiking and then throws away all the shit that I hated about it, which is sleeping in random strangers' houses and like stealing almonds. Now that's what hitchhiking is. Stealing almonds. Then I started making <laughs> videos on Bourbon Street in New Orleans, interviewing like drunk people. And then I figured like, yo, I want to combine like comedic interview style with that philosophy of the road. I didn't know what to do, so I pitched the idea to this like media company called Doing Things. I was like, yo, if you guys buy me this RV that we're sitting I mean, in right now, I know Chad wanted to make a sick show out of it, and it'll be like a cultural exploration of America, and it'll be like funny, meme, LMAO shit. That's how it started. I convinced a company to buy me an RV. And my first project was- That's cool though. Burning Burning man. They actually bought him an RV? And the stakes were high, because each ticket was two grand and the parking spot was two grand. I had a $10,000 budget for my first project and a team of complete, I don't want to say idiots, but unprofessional friends of mine. I mean, those videos were straight up like meme shit. You know, like, those, we're just making fun of people with those videos. Burning man. I mean, that's like our earliest work, just like crash zooms and like bait <laughs> questions. Like, we don't do that really anymore. Burning man was like our peak, just like LMAO meme content era. That's good. It's, it's like limit testing, though. This is not real. Flat Earth. No, I, I think it's interesting because that's like limit testing, you know, like like you try the, the, the most baby stuff or whatever at the beginning when, uh, when you start, say people will react and then you, you kind of know what, where you're going next. This is our first how like, to not get undercover there. dive into the conspiracy world. We kind of just like exposed them. We didn't realize that it was going to be about the Jews. The Jews are in fucking, yeah, they freaking control all the, of everything. Most Gentiles are not very conspiratorial minded. We weren't going in being like, we're going to make Wait, them look the Jews. Four minutes into every interview, they give you this look where they're like, all right, I'm going to name drop the Jew. And then before you know it, they're like fucking totally saying crazy shit about Hitler. A little short guy with the funny mustache about yay tall. He realized that the flat earth model was correct and went to seize the gate of the south in what we call New Berlin, Antarctica. And we don't bait people with any questions. What, what we do is we remain neutral, which causes people to say insane shit. I don't know why they say crazy shit. I don't say anything. I just stand there with the microphone. I'll be like, 
I look at the camera and they keep going and going. These yeah, are really so I guess crazy stuff. This was the first time I was like, all right, let me actually use this platform that I have to cover some shit that I care about. You know, like I, I took the suit off for that video. If you ever see me with no suit on, with like a black sweatshirt like this, it means that I'm not there to make jokes. It wasn't so much of me being like, oh, let me get political because, you know, I want to get more of a liberal audience. It was like, media is not covering this. Media is not talking to the people caught yeah, this thing in long range in, in Minneapolis and figuring out why. Why do you feel like people are criticizing the building burnings? Because they don't know. They don't, they're driven they're not, feeling they this. don't care about the humans. They don't this care is, about the black folks. This is temporary, okay? This is our future we stand up for. We make a history yeah, right now. It. And I filmed from like 11 to 4 in the morning. And I was like, you know what? I feel like I just created something dope. And I feel like I just did the first interview with someone in front of a burning building. And I feel like I'm showing the emotional side of something that shouldn't be explained in terms of property damage. Yeah, so I'll, after I'll skip those segments. I got a lot of love for it, and I realized, like, yo, I actually can make shit that's not built for laughs. But I want to be able to make actually comedic shit and then actually do real reporting at the same time. I don't think anyone is, like, going to try to box me in at this point. Pizza by the slice and cold beer on Check the Check, we're going to do a major skip and coming. It's crazy there's fans out here, right? Can you get my picture with him? Yeah, can I get my picture? Of course. White Claw! Holy shit! Bitch. It's Surgeons, bitch! Last night we took 40 tabs of acid and we saw a fucking smash mouth. That's the main thing people get wrong Ch about. I have to do a major sip shot until like 9.15 over here, apparently. Nine, is is, is, is 9.25 fine? 9.15? I'll skip now just, just to make sure. Yeah, apparently it's a bunch of TOS in there. No, there's more? 940, holy shit. Is this good from here? But Trump might be right about Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> fucking gasket. <laughs> Am I role playing? No. Is this like a stalemate? <laughs> Is this a, a fucking showdown? Are we, Are we supposed to move? We totally go around it. Everybody has indigenous ancestors, you know, like, is she gonna hit us? What the fuck is this? I... Is everything okay? Back Thanks. up. We have to back the car up? Back it up. Yeah, I'd say I have an emotional connection to the RV, but I'm also ready to stop living in it at any moment. It's fun to like go wherever you want, right? And I have like the freedom to like hop between states every day. But at the same time, you kind of miss having like a friend group or like a network of people. Like you kind of feel like baseless in a way. So I want to keep living in the army, but I want to like pick a city where I can have friends that I come back to. The more I stay still, the more I start to dissociate. And the more I start to feel like I'm living in a simulation, like I'm trapped behind my eyes. I, I have, have that too. brain damage from shrooms. Seriously? Oh. Okay. Yeah. I have something that's called HPPD. It's called hallucinogenic post-perception disorder. I get not that. So I, I have like permanent visual damage. Like I see visual snow and like tracers like even right now. Everywhere I look from using too much shrooms and stuff at a young age. I was 13 when I was going super hard with shrooms. So I guess around that age, I started to like dissociate a lot. Went to like pretty severe like depersonalization, derealization disorder for a few years. I mean at that point, I felt like I needed to live more extremely to like feel in body. So yeah, everything that I healing that. And it's gotten better. So that like was fine. my brain nope. and vision might be fucked up for life, but I'm definitely not gonna live a boring life. That was fine, just you know, maybe Honestly, sometimes kind of I get worried that you know when the show grows, like it'll be harder to like keep it raw and real. But to be honest, the show's already pretty big and we're still doing this, so fuck man. Life's crazy. I didn't ever think I would have a show. Yeah, the show's changed a lot, but it's like exactly the same too. Like we still live in this RV. We still have the same like clunky giant camera. Barely understand what sh shutter speed is or does. <laughs> it's definitely like not that sustainable of a lifestyle. Like it, it wears on you a little bit. You have to smell your homies every day. <laughs> but I can do it for a lot longer.
I hate when people say they come away from the videos like That's all cool. nihilistic and bummed out on the country. They're like, wow, everyone's crazy. We're in this, this giant, giant culture war. We're all fucked. I just want people to feel like there's like humor in darkness because we're in like a really bad time. I just want to show people how crazy things actually are <laughs> in a really objective way that's like quick and easy to digest. Pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, so you guys don't realize we've seen all these videos before. Like, we've seen a lot of these small segments because these are segmented videos from like a bunch of we watched and they're fine. Like small segments of whatever is fine. That was pretty good though. I guess we had to skip a lot of it, but uh, I think it was a good insight because we watched all the, all the videos, they're pretty good.